My name is Katherine Reiser, Director of the Genetic Counselor Training Program here at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. The following genetic counseling session is conducted by Robin Bennett of the University of Washington Medical Center, Division of Medical Genetics. In this session, Michael Wagner is being seen in the genetics clinic because he recently had genetic testing for long QT type 1 and tested positive, which means he has a mutation in the long QT gene. He was tested because his eight-year-old daughter, Emma, was diagnosed with long QT type 1 after a fainting episode. Long QT1 is a cardiac arrhythmia disorder, which, if unrecognized, can lead to sudden death. This session is necessarily shorter than would be typical for most genetic counseling appointments. However, it will provide you with an introduction to the profession. Hello, Michael. I'm Robin Bennett. I'm a genetic counselor. Hi, Robin. How are you doing? How are you today? Did you have any trouble getting in, or how was your trip in today? Well, you know, I got here. Yeah, so. no trouble with traffic? or. So I know you have an appointment in cardiology after this, so I want to make sure we're respectful of your time. Uh, tell me what you're hoping to get out of being here today. Is there? I've read through your chart and I know about the, the diagnosis that's been made, but I'm just curious where you're coming from and what kinds of questions that you want to make sure I address today. Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot to start with. I know so little about what's going on. It's um, I have a very brief understanding. I mean, I Googled a few things, and um, I mean, I understand like what I have is genetic, and it has got something to do with like heart rhythms. <laughs> but okay. uh, mostly, I just—it's been a rough couple weeks. Yeah. I, uh, I don't really know what's happening with my daughter Emma, and um, I'm not really sure how concerned I should be. Okay. So it sounds like you've been told that your genetic test result was showed that this you have this condition called long QT syndrome or yep. uh, and sometimes they call it Romana Ward and that you're <laughs> not, I, I don't know <laughs> if you've come across that word or not uh, and that your daughter uh, now were you with her when that happened no. or so and so how did that all come about that you've been learned about this um, well she lives with my uh, my ex mm -hmm. ex-wife in Milwaukee and mm -hmm. um, they were swimming and uh, she just I don't know if attack is the right word, an mm -hmm. attack, uh, but um, I'm here in Madison, so I just I get a phone call, and you know, and the doctor says I should get a test, and it's all. I mean, I've seen her since then, but uh, like only once, mm -hmm. and so. So it's probably a huge shock. Yeah, I don't. I'm. I feel kind of out of the loop. Yeah. Well, let me just make sure I have your family history correct. I know okay. that they uh, shared some information when your daughter was uh, evaluated. And um, and so you have a son, Teddy? Yes. Also, and does he, does he live with you or he? No. So do they come visit you together, the two of them? I, I get to see them uh, every other weekend and, mm -hmm. and holidays. Mm -hmm. And now my notes say that he was having a genetic test. Do you know if that has come he, back? Or we what? haven't heard anything. Yeah, so that must Which is, yeah. A lot of, yes. Yeah, and so when, do you know when you'll be hearing about that or who, who will be telling you? Days, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's okay. a, again, it's telephone. Right. And then for your own health, uh, any health problems for you? Well, that's the thing. I, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, nothing, I've never felt strange or anything. So, like, <laughs> when I get the, you know, the call that I, I have something that's the same thing Emma may be having, I guess I'm a little nervous that's, I gonna have a heart attack or something, or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we'll let, we'll make sure we address those concerns too. Okay. Um, and your are you taking any medications now? No, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. even like taking Tylenol. And then your brother Kevin, I know, drowned in an, um, during an accident. He did. Did you know yeah, him? Yeah. Uh, well, where? I mean, he was older than me, but mm -hmm. um, I, I have memories. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Mm -hmm. Is, it, is is this possible like he had the same thing and had an attack or I mean, I potentially know. I know that sounds scary given what your daughter's gone through and I'll I'll make sure I clarify all those things I just want to make sure I know what's going on with your family history um, and then your your uh, sister any health problems for her ah uh, I mean she's never been tested or anything mm -hmm. and I mean and does she I do you know. have do you have much contact with her yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I haven't told her about this yet. She doesn't um, know, yeah. No. How about your parents? Do they know any information no. about it? Okay. Um, okay, so I think that's, I, I, I can go over this later. I just want to make sure that we have time to talk more about what this is. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and give you some facts, and then we'll make sure that we have time for you to answer questions. Uh, do you know what will be going on later this afternoon when you're meeting with the cardiologist? Have they told you what they'll be doing? or uh, A series of tests? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm assuming they're going to find out if my heart's okay. I mean, I mean, can it be even though I have this genetic thing? I mean, like, is that already kind of a done deal? or? So let me just give you some background information about this and how it relates to you and, and to your children and the rest of your family. So uh, what, what this condition does, it affects the rhythm of your heart, as you right. were mentioning. And uh, it, it, if your heart is controlled by electrical activity. I don't know how much science you've had. It's not bit, supposed yeah. to be a science test or anything. Uh, so uh, it, it controls the electri electrical activity of the heart. And so uh, sometimes when you're exposed to, most people do fine with this condition, but uh, sometimes the, the rhythm of the heart can, can uh, become abnormal and out of, out of rhythm. And particularly that can happen if you have a sudden shock. Um, so I, I don't know if your daughter was swimming in a cold pool or what was going on I at mean, that it point. But it was early you know, spring, I guess, coming mm -hmm. in. So, I mean. so sometimes that can trigger it. Sometimes a, a sudden a, emotional thing in terms of uh, a shock. Maybe you hear some bad news or that that might trigger it. Um, in general, most people do fairly well with this, especially because we can do treatment with a medication called a beta blocker. So I think the cardiologist will be talking to you okay. about that. And so the, the good news is, is that now that we've figured out what's going on with Emma and that you also carry this, there's things we can do to help prevent the, the um, consequences of this. Um, you're so am I going to have to be on pills the rest of my life? I, I, that's, I don't necessarily know that that's a fact at all. But that's what the cardiologist would talk to you about. So it's a medication that can control the rhythm of your heart. Okay. And so they'll probably be doing some tests later today looking at the rhythm of your heart. Uh, have you ever had that done? It's called an um, ECG or an EKG where they look I, at the rhythm no, of I, your heart. I mean. uh, they just monitor the rhythm. And, um, and then they'll decide whether, that, whether you or, or your daughter need any specific treatment. She, since she's had an episode, it's a little bit different than someone your age who's been just fine. So, uh, but, but it is a very manageable condition. Once in a while, it, this is scary to think about, they, but they put in a, um, a special, what they call an inner cardiac defibrillator to, to, so that if your heart is going out of rhythm. Like, that, a, like a pacemaker or something? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So they can put that in uh, to help control control that. Again, those are all things that are there to help prevent problems from happening, and they're not a guarantee that they would necessarily be done. Uh, I know it's really hard to hear about all this uncertainty and how does this, and not, you've just heard about your daughter and now it's affecting you, you and you're worried about your son. And, yeah, well, and I, 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 you're, most people don't need that. It, it will be what the cardiologist decides today, and that's you, you're at a great place in terms of getting good care for that. So is her condition most likely worse than mine because I haven't had to my It's not any? a matter of being worse. It's a, a matter of uh, she's obviously had some symptoms already, so some of the symptoms can be fainting. Uh, the the um, My mother used to do that all the time. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I heard that. And it, so how this is inherited, it's called a dominant condition. So you get one copy of your gene from your mom and one from your dad. In, in this case, if the, the gene is changed or altered, or they call it a mutation, it's a 50-50 chance it gets passed on. So a, a son or a daughter could have that. So, so it's not a guarantee then that Teddy has it. No, it's 50-50. Okay. Or so, my sister. And it doesn't have okay. anything correct. It doesn't have anything to do with how if they look like you, or uh, it, it's really do, doesn't have anything to do with anything like that. So we just have to wait and see what those test results show. Okay. Um, so your sister, I, I I don't know if we can help you talk to her about this, uh, in terms of uh, if she lives in this area. What we'll be doing today is sending you a summary letter. 
and of course we can see you back if you have questions. This is just sort of an introductory visit and we're definitely here as a resource for you and your family. If your sister lives in the area, we can see her here and talk to her about testing. Uh, if she lives somewhere else, we can give you the name of the genetic counseling clinic closer to her home. Okay. So and she should probably get tested then? Yeah, just because there are things that we can do to prevent problems. Uh, and we don't know for sure which side of the family this came from. It's, we're assuming it maybe came from your mother's side since she had those fainting episodes and her brother Anthony had the sudden, um, it sounded like he died suddenly. I'm, I'm not quite sure exactly oh. how that worked, but. We just assumed he drowned. I mean, like, he drowned, but I mm -hmm. mean, we didn't know there was other possible. So we're assuming that your mother or your father had, had carries this as well. So she should probably get tested then? Probably, yeah. So it's a, a lot of things to think about, I, I know. Um, I'm sure it brings up lots of emotions for you. Is there anything that I did that could have caused this? And of course, we don't have any control of what genes we, we pass to our, our children. Uh, but it's normal to be concerned and worried. And again, that's why we're here to, to help you make sure that your family is healthy and that you're healthy too. So it's kind of an odd test result because it's not that you're a, a different person than you were a few weeks ago before you found out this information. Um, it's something that, you're, that you've had since you were conceived, that this gene change, it didn't make you sick, but there are things that we can do to help, to help follow you and keep you and your family healthy. So how come, how come it hasn't affected me? Or I mean, I guess it could have and I didn't know, but that's uh, an excellent question. Probably half the people who have this don't even know they have it. And it gets identified similar to how it's been identified in your daughter where somebody has an episode. Uh, when your brother Kevin passed away, they didn't really know much about this condition, so they wouldn't have connected that. So I just want to clarify, too, that just because this happened to Kevin that way does not mean that we can't help your, your daughter. But there's some precautions that we normally take. Um, there's some medicines that should be avoided, and I can give you a list of the medicines and a website to check, and the cardiologist can talk to you about the medicines to avoid. Okay. Because sometimes, and th they're medicines that you, you wouldn't normally get over the counter. It's something a doctor would prescribe. Some people will actually like, wear... Like allergy medicines or something? Or uh, I have no, to I look exactly takes, at the list. Uh, that's really something to talk about with your primary... Your primary care doctor should know about this. I don't know if you have a regular doctor that you well, see. Emma uh, does. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the, your, your daughter's pediatrician should know about this. Um, and so there are medications that are not something that you would normally take over the counter, something that a doctor would prescribe. So if they know about this, it's easy enough to consider alternatives to those medications. Um, so, and I'll, there's an excellent support group. I'll give you some information about that as a way for you to meet other families that are going through through this. And there's online uh, ones. You said that you're uh, internet savvy going on Google. and. I, I wouldn't go that far, but yeah. yeah. But but it's kind of nice to know that this actually is a fairly common disease. It affects probably about one in three thousand people, which oh. may sound rare, but for for most conditions, nice. that's a fairly common disease, and it's probably underestimated because most people are doing just fine, like you are, with the condition. So, is there like a shortened life expectancy? Do I mean is Am I going to die when she's like 50 or am oh, I going to? Yes, I can imagine that you'd be worried about that. But again, now that we know it, th th there's really been a leap of understanding now that we can look at the genetic causes of why people have these inherited arrhythmia problems, these rhythm disturbance problems. And uh, really, we can, I think, be uh, fairly good at, at preventing those kinds of problems. So we, we wouldn't expect you to have a, a decreased life expectancy expectancy. We have to be cautious. We, we don't want to, um, we have to treat this seriously, but um, hopefully you can put this in a, maybe a packet of, of time in your, in your mind and say, well, I, I'm going to all the right people. My, my family, my children are going to the right people. And uh, I'll, I'll just think about this when I need to go for my cardiology evaluation every year, or every six months, whatever they decide. Um, they might need to follow you a little bit more closely originally just to to make sure you don't have the cardiac rhythm problems. Some people go their whole life and never have any problems at all. And hopefully over time we'll get better able to predict who's more likely to have problems than, than uh, not in the same family. But it could switch at any time, right? 
switch. I mean, like I could be fine this year, and next year it could develop. Or uh, well, it's a it's a. I don't think we clearly understand exactly how the the rhythm problems. Um, what what triggers those problems? I think that's a good question to ask your cardiologist. Uh, but in general, it's not something where you'll become uh, sick over time. It's something that they follow for the rhythm problems. And if they put you on some medications, and they may not need to do this, but th th these beta blockers these um, that they can consider putting you on, if they put you on those, then th that should help prevent the, the condition from having problems in the first place. Sometimes those medications make people tired. I don't know, are you, a, do, are you um, active? Are you an athlete or what kind yeah, of? I, I'm <laughs> I guess I, I'm concerned about having to n not be able to do these things, and then I, got, I guess Emma can't. Uh, won't, she, she won't. Shouldn't swim anymore. Should, should she not run anymore? Or like I, I think they talk more about a competitive level. So being a, uh, a swimmer. In, in, at a competitive level is probably not good, but certainly she can do all the normal things that, that children do in terms of playing. And sometimes what's, I think, helpful is to wear a medic alert bracelet or a necklace. Are you familiar with those? Uh, yeah. Like, don't, is that usually like an elderly thing? Well, it can help people so that if you were to have a sudden episode, to know that this is what you have, especially for your, if you weren't able to, to speak, then someone knows that you have that. There, there's all sorts of um, nice ones. It doesn't have to be something that's really obvious, but it can really help people to, to know what to do in a sudden situation. Um, it's something that probably her school should know about in terms of the nurse there, uh, so that it went that that they're aware that this is a potential complication. But again, uh, this doesn't affect her ability to think or function. It's really something that we have to watch, but uh, it doesn't necessarily have to to uh, change who she is. She can become who she wants in Don't terms of a profession. Just yeah. It's good to hear, I guess. Yeah, I, I think it's really hard to. Um, to, to know how to think about this because it's so variable I and it's almost that's almost more unsettling to to not have a clear uh, well if I do this this won't happen there there's a lot of um, ambiguity with it very helpless yeah yeah so again that's hopefully something that um, I, I don't know if I can help you think about what would make you uh, feel more comfortable in terms of following this for yourself or for your family so that that as I mentioned sometimes talking to other parents I think it's normal to have a really uh, just kind of be in shock at this point but hopefully we can help move you towards uh, a little bit better understanding of how we can move forward and, and uh, make you and your family feeling feeling more comfortable Emma's only eight. How do I? Ex I mean, I, she's been to the doctor. Her her mother's been there with her, and she's been through something like this. But how do you uh, tell her? Do I explain this to her, or do I just tell her you shouldn't be running with the other kids, or like? How do yeah, that's a, an excellent question. You know your children, your your daughter better than than I do and what her maturity level is. It's sort of like some of the other difficult conversations that that people have about uh, sex and other things like that with their their, their children someday. <laughs> but, uh, maybe that's the wrong, we'll that wrong mother, approach. But yeah, <laughs> but uh, th those are difficult conversations to have. And mostly what she needs to know is that she's uh, a fine young girl and, and there's some cautions that she needs to to take and again that's where maybe if she's wearing one of those medical alert bracelets that would be be good um, in terms of uh, I, I don't know are you involved with someone else now or are you in a yeah. relationship so um, this is something that if you're planning to have more children as I mentioned it's a 50 50 chance and so people sometimes that that influences whether they want to have another child or not and again if that's a concern for you or a new partner we'd be happy to talk to you about that and again not to put a lot of heavy stuff on you in in one visit uh. um, 
I'm just trying to gather information to know what the best next steps are for you. Oh, geez. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I guess that's a little farther in the future. Is there, I, I don't, I'm not planning on having children anymore, but um, is there anything I can do if, if that was in the future to prevent this gene from so, going forward? Or? Yeah, so unfortunately we don't have gene therapy oh, to, to fix it. Uh, I think that over time, though, again, be much better ways of controlling it and really having people live an, a normal, healthy life. Uh, in terms of testing in a pregnancy, there are options for that. Uh, there's, I don't know if you've heard of amniocentesis or that there's a, um, a procedure that's called amniocentesis and another one called chorionic villus sampling where you can look at the, the fetal tissue from the, the developing um, placenta in the chorionic villus which is done at about 10 weeks in pregnancy wow. and, and then an amniocentesis is done at about um, 13 to 15, 16 weeks in pregnancy. Uh, and you can tell whether the the child, the, the fetus, has the same gene mutation or not. Some people, um, that's really important to them in making a decision about having a child. Other people uh, just are, are fine with that and it's something that, that a baby could be tested for soon after birth. It's always hard to know when the best time to test a child for this. It's usually not something that happens uh, at a really young age, but it is something that would probably be good if you were having another child uh, to test the child pretty soon after birth, just because there are some, again, things to watch for. Should should I come in with my uh, my what my my ex-wife? Uh, should we sit down together and? So what what type, what type of relationship do you have? Is it? I guess it's getting better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this isn't helping. Mm -hmm. Is it something that, in general, you you f are comfortable when you're together at appointments? Do you normally go to appointments for your children, to doctor's appointments together? Well, it's, it's been a l just a little less than a year, and I guess there hasn't been a whole lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's always good, if, if especially for important things like this, if you can be together. If it's not too awkward, then you're both hearing the same information together. You don't have to worry about sort of misinterpreting information, yeah. uh, and and again the whole issues of guilt. Uh, I'm sure t to try to treat your daughter just just like any other child, especially right now, might might feel really hard. So I, I think it's nice for you to be together when you're talking to her doctor so that, again, you hear the information and have the same plan and the same ideas of what to do if there's an emergency, who to call, um, just to be a little bit more coordinated when, when, when you're sh since you're, she doesn't live with you all the time. Uh, I would probably be good just for not enforcing, but this consistency, I guess, for Emma. Um, should should we tell her that this is something that I gave her, <laughs> or is that irrelevant at the moment? So I just again want to emphasize that this isn't anything that you did that you could have prevented. I'm sure you feel that way, but it. I mean, okay, so something that her dad also has. Yes. Uh, so I I don't think that that's really necessary. I, I think it's always good to be honest with children when they ask you questions, but most children, especially at her age, are not, uh, you may be reading more into the question than what she's actually asking for. So if she were to ask something like, um, Dad, is this something that you have to worry about? You, you could say, uh, this is something that I go to see my doctors for and I'm getting good care for that not to make her worried because that is a true statement um, and going back to what types of information to share with her again I think that it's not something that you have to have a heavy conversation with her and sit down and, and talk about it's more uh, talking with her physicians to see what are the precautions that they really want to make sure that you're taking and for her to be aware of some of the symptoms and some of the precautions she'll need to take and learn how 
learn about that. And I think some of the, the support groups that I mentioned, they have all sorts of literature. There's other parents that have been in the same situation. I think that's a great way to learn how other parents have dealt with the same information. Okay. I think sometimes there can be feelings in a family where, for example, if you have this gene change and your sister doesn't, sometimes that can cause some funny family dynamics, um, even going back to when you were children, well, you, how come you always get this and you get that, and it's funny how those things can play out. But um, again, uh, we have no choice on which genes we pass on, and I, it can be kind of awkward sharing that information in a family, but again, you're helping to potentially give her information that's important for her and for her children. No, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, I guess, but that's... And again, your, your role is really just to inform her that this is in the family. You don't have to explain all the, the facts and all the genetic information. What we can do is help you find a place where she can go and get all that information. Your job is really just to help inform her of this, and uh, often what we do, again, as I mentioned, we'll send you a summary letter with all of this information in it, so you don't have to remember all the, the facts we've talked about, because I think that's really overwhelming, especially when you first hear this information, and I think it would be good for you maybe to come back, or maybe if you and your wife want to come back, um, or you can see the genetic counselor that she saw when Emma was first diagnosed, and, and uh, kind of have a time to think more about your questions and when the shock is kind of worn off a little bit. Uh, if Teddy has it, um, him being so young, is that, I guess you have it from, from birth, right? Uh, but is, I don't even know what I'm trying to say, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sure you're if, worried about that, yes. What should we do if Teddy has it, I guess? I think it's the same kind of precautions that we're talking about where he probably would see a pediatric cardiologist and talk about, they'd do some testing to see if he has any manifestations. And again, a lot of, of people have no manifestations. And especially as you get older, if, if you haven't shown any manifestations of this, it's unlikely that it's going to happen suddenly when someone's older. Uh, but as children, we have to just be cautious and follow him. So he, again, you can talk to the cardiologist when you see him today. I'm assuming you're seeing the adult cardiologist, but your children should see, if, he, if Teddy has it, would see a pediatric uh, cardiologist who really specializes in this. And, and I think it's good to go to, you're, you're lucky to live near a major medical center. It's, it's good to go to someone that we can help you talk to in terms of really knowing what this condition is. This, this might be a question for the cardiologist, but um, is this uh, something that is constant? Like, is Emma always going to have a regular heartbeat, or does it only happen in attacks? It, it is not a constant thing. So normally oh. her heart is beating just fine. So what we need to help you work with the cardiologist is to figure out what, when these episodes, what, what things might trigger an episode, how do we prevent the episodes in the first place with medications. Um, most people don't need to go so far as having the, the um, implantable device put in. So, um, so the episode, I like that word episode better than attack. Um, is that something they can see from the, the EKG? Um, I mean, obviously I'm not going to have a, that episode right now, but they can tell if it's more likely to happen. Or Sometimes the, that, that will show you that you do have these irregular heartbeats and, and that they definitely need to, to be treated. Okay, so it, it can but be happening in, in a non-episode way? Yes, but it's not something that happens all the time necessarily. So. Okay. And again, those are good questions for the cardiologist. I, I can't really talk about yeah, sorry, the management of it. <laughs> no, no, it's not to be sorry about it all. So, um, so I just want to be respectful of our, our time. Was it? Uh, and, and I want to make sure that I've addressed, sometimes the, the biggest questions come out at the end, uh, that I've addressed some of your concerns and uh, if I'm hoping that I haven't made you more anxious, I feel like we really had to talk about a no, lot uh, of uh, detailed information and not very much time. No, this has been good. I, I didn't even know what questions to ask before, mm -hmm. so <laughs> I, I feel a little bit better about that. I just feel like I know what to ask now. and. I guess we'll see. I'll probably be back. 
Is there any? Well, I hope you will feel. I, I want to again. I'll send you a summary letter. I'll have my phone number in it. There's no stupid question. If you just need to kind of talk and say, you know, this really isn't what I had in my mind. I'm I'm really frustrated. Um, please feel free to call because I think sometimes all your questions come in the parking lot when you're leaving. So yeah, I will. I will definitely send you an email. I'll probably have more questions after the yeah, cardiologist. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll give you. Uh, here's my email. And then this is just some information I printed off for you about the various support groups. Um, so I think I, I, people have different ways of getting support, but I, I think these groups are, they have really good information. It's a, a good way to, to talk to some other parents because believe me, you're not, you're not so there's, alone there's at all. A, there's a group of parents that no yes. <laughs> okay. That'd yes, nice. I, enjoy, I personally enjoyed looking through some of the, the comments that were posted. I, I think you'll find it really helpful. And you, you may, you, you can ask your questions there too. You may, uh, I'm sure there's other couples that are divorced and talk about how, how they deal with that. Okay. In terms um, of sh uh, talking, uh, you know, shared visits and that type of thing. Robin, thank you so much. Oh really yeah, it's a pleasure it. meeting with you. I'll be thinking good thoughts for you. Oh, gee, thanks.